Bam! We're live? That's it. All right, man. Look, All right. Look, look what we have here. It's like a cooking show. It's a BRS TV cooking show. You know, the thing is, man, I'm missing uh, the slap chop, dude. Oh, slap, yeah. Slap, slap, man. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, for all of you that said the, in Breakfast Ryan's videos or my videos that we look like the slap chop guy. Boom. Not it's on, chance. man. All right, today, <laughs> I mean, over under uh, cutting your thumb off. Uh, <laughs> I'm a clumsy I mean, guy when it comes to like sharp objects. We're, me too. So we're going live here. We're going to make some uh, do-it-yourself fish food. Okay. Or, or at least we're going to like kind of go through all the different ways that you can make fish food. I'm not sure what the end result of this is going to be. Wow. But we're definitely going to learn about how somebody would go about making do-it-yourself fish food. Uh, we got like new shots and stuff here. Man, show us our close-up shot, dude. Look at this. Do it. I mean, where is it? It's coming in. Bam! All right, so we got close-up shots. Let's go back. And so we should be able to show like you know, how we're actually doing this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, really we're just going to kind of cut through a whole bunch of different fish foods. Uh, a lot of you probably watched the Coral Nutrition video a few weeks ago. So I think this yeah. is like 101, right? Okay. Like fish, do-it-yourself yeah. fish, food, fish food 101. Like yeah. the... For those of you listening on the podcast, uh, too bad. You should probably go look at this one because oh, there's a lot of podcast. visual stuff. So. Oh, oh yeah, man. we have a podcast. I posted it at the link of this video, of this live stream, in the description. There's two links there, so go check those out. Uh, a lot of downloads so far. Oh, I, really? Yeah, a lot of Apple users, because it's like uh, mm. three to one. Cool. But, yeah. Well, so for those of you who don't know, uh, today was supposed to be like a water change video for the hybrid thing, but I was yeah. sick like all last week with the flu. So uh, we kind of just couldn't get it done. <laughs> so, hey, man, I was going to make some fresh food today. All right, so this is kind of what we're going to do here is we're going to show a couple of different ways to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think we're going to talk a little bit about like a fish food base. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to move on to like, oh, what does a coral food look like? So, you know, for that first year or two, you know, when your corals are tiny, you probably don't need like a whole lot of yeah. extra stuff in there. And pro actually, really, a whole lot of extra stuff is just going to cause all kinds of algae issues in the tank. So it's really about when you got a robust tank, like, you know, the 160 here will probably feed a, uh, you know, coral uh, fish food mix. Yeah. But the new tanks with the XXL 750 and the 170, just fish food, right? That's all you really need. Yeah. Fish food and fish poo. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Uh, and so, you know, uh, most of you probably out there are feeding like uh, a, uh, you know, brine shrimp or a mysis shrimp or something like that. A couple that. different cubes, maybe. Maybe mix Could it up a little some, bit. Something that somebody's already mixed up before. Uh, too, yeah, right? I don't, we don't have any Rod's food out no. here. But Rod, you know, is making essentially like a do it yourself fish food that you don't have to do it yourself, you know? Yeah, because uh, I mean, if you guys could see beyond the camera, we've got. A pile of fish stuff yeah, over like here, like food. We got a pile of crazy stuff over here. Stuff here, man. It's like so all kinds of crazy when, stuff coming. When you out buy it, when you buy it pre DIY like rods, uh, I mean, there's a lot to be said about the effort and time that goes into putting all this stuff together, which we're going to show you how to do. So that said, you know, uh, you know, like none of the foods that we feed, you know, the aquarium, whether it's you know prepared frozen stuff mm -hmm. or the stuff we're feeding today, are like any of these fish is like exact diet yeah. but you know a lot of that stuff like brine shrimp is just like empty food it's yeah, just like just, a shell yeah it's just like very very it's mostly water inside that mm. thing you know so the foods that we're going to feed today are going to be like mostly protein and fat you know uh, and basically the biggest thing is going to be by cutting them up into the size that you need yeah it's right? tough <clears throat> well you know it, it takes a little bit of effort man Lots like a little thought, bit of trial and yeah. effort Hey, Dave, would you actually get us some water and uh, yeah. like a beaker or something like that? Maybe a couple of beakers? Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, you know, I think we're going to show how to do this by hand first. Okay. We also got the food processor here, and uh, the food processor is the easiest way, but it also, you know, you know, goes wrong fast. So, like, uh, you know, there's a couple of ways to use the food processor. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Perfect. The, the one can, that's good water, Dave, too. <laughs> yeah. It's DI water. Uh, one of the things that I wouldn't use is uh, like a blender. And I tried the blender and the blender just didn't work. Uh, the blender just turns it into paste usually. And it, oh, like yeah. it actually doesn't even go down usually. It just turns into goo, man. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, wouldn't plus, you have to have a second. Oh, have a second blender, so you're not using the one that you use for your morning shakes. So, well, yeah. So <laughs> that's one thing too. You know, today, you if you're gonna go do this, you can decide one of two things. You can decide that, hey, I'm gonna go out and buy like some new tools and stuff to do mm. this, or I can get a new spouse. Uh, <laughs> it's one or the other. Uh, you can't pick one. You know, if you make uh, 
fish food slurry in your spouse's smoothie maker, yeah, man, you're in big trouble. Uh, <laughs> at least at my house, you are. So uh, the stuff will stink, uh, and it will like the plastic and stuff will definitely smell uh, fishy. Fishy, like, like it's fish done, taste. dude. Oh, so yeah. like I can't see. Oh yeah, you can. So this guy right here, I just bought it. It's a Oster, uh, you know, food processor. Yeah. There's 35 bucks at Target. Yeah. Uh, I bet you can get it for 28 bucks at Walmart or something. Uh, and super, super cheap. So, like, if you're gonna do this at home, you know, like, just go buy a new one. Uh, and we bought some knives and stuff for this too. Like, I don't think you, you could probably reuse knives, man. It's stainless steel. But, like, uh, I went to Costco today and I bought some boards and some uh, knives at the, the business Costco. For those of you who haven't been there, it's different than normal Costco. They don't have pizza and hot dogs. No, no pizza and hot dogs. <laughs> they have, like, big old, you know, Hobart mixers in there and, like, industrial stuff. Industrial ovens yeah. and stuff. They got $17 cleavers. They That's got a, a pair of knives, man, for 10 bucks. Uh, yeah, well, yeah I mean, look at that for ten dollars. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't even know what these were, but you got two of them for almost nothing. So like uh, Costco is a perfect place to go pick up this kind of stuff. It's gonna buy a blender there, although they had a commercial one. They wanted two hundred bucks for yeah, it. No. So we're gonna stick with a thirty-five dollar guy. <laughs> All right, so. Um, so we're talking about uh, first thing. It's just fish only food right now, yeah, right? So we're just gonna do a, a fish only. And so, uh, hey Dave, actually inside the freezer, there's also uh, some little fish. Fish uh, cubes in the far freezer, so maybe you can go grab that. For and on us. the in the fridge, it's the right hand fridge. On the right hand fridge, he's got a cup of the mixed stuff that we already made, plus fish eggs. Oh, fish eggs. Mm. Freezer and fridge. Yeah, I don't know. Go find it all day. <laughs> all right, good luck. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start with, start with? Uh, like, say, I don't know. The first thing we started with this afternoon was the cod. So let's cod. Start with the cod. All right, cod. All right. So you know, if you're getting real picky about this and you're trying to decide like what kind of fish to to do for this, uh, you know, there's a couple of different things about. I guess you can look at the fat content. You know, like mm -hmm. salmon and stuff uh, has a lot more fat in it. You can just visually see it. You know, so if you're looking for that, you can try that. Uh, I like to use uh, cod a lot. I like to use shrimp, like whole human, like grade shrimp. You mentioned the using cod or trying to source fish, uh, you know, seafood that is on the lowest end of the food mm -hmm. chain. Yep. Yeah, so at least less amount of mercury and yep, less all those heavy like, metals. Yeah. So like if you got like shark or something like that, you know, it's kind of on the other end of the food chain. You know, they've all eaten each other, and so the mercury tends to build up. So tuna can maybe have that sometimes too. So. Uh, I don't really know how much that matters in a reef aquarium, man. Like, yeah. I mean, you're not really putting that a much lot. in there, and you're and like, if you're not doing any water changes, like maybe five years from now, you're gonna have a problem for that. But <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, if you're just thinking about it, you know, pick things on the lower end of the food chain, I guess. Uh, you know, sh like squid, you know, yeah. shrimp, uh, those kinds of things. We also met, you just mentioned a good another point too is like you're not using a lot of this stuff. So you'll see about all of the packages and stuff that we have here today. We're gonna make this makes a lot of food. Oh yeah. For some people, almost a year's supply for about what we bought today. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, uh, reef chili here was a frozen food at one point in time. Actually, that's where this came from. Is I decided to make my own frozen uh, coral fish food yeah. like a gosh, that must have been 15 years ago, something like that. And uh, I made. After I was done, and I realized that I had like maybe I don't know 20 years worth. You know? <laughs> After, uh, and then I posted it up on the local club, man, and uh, just started to get rid of it. And they sold all of it. Well, sure, they sold all of it inside of like 10 minutes. I couldn't believe how fast it all went. Uh, there's a little dish like uh, I can run and get it. Okay, yes. go ahead. Yeah, uh, Ryan will take it from here. We got a few things. Like there's a lot going on. So. I know. I'm trying to wrap it all up here. So the, we sold the, the reef chili, there was a frozen product and they, uh, the club bought it up in 10 minutes, started selling it at eBay, all kinds of stuff. So it was pretty fun to see, you know, how people really engaged in homemade fish food, but you do make a lot, man. So, you know, don't be surprised when you mix this up and you realize, man, I, I have many, many, many years worth. Yeah, you know, most of the time you put it into like a little uh, Ziploc baggie or whatnot and one bag, man, may last you two months. So, you know, kind of try to pay attention to that. So one of the things you're gonna notice here is when you're doing a do-it-yourself fish food, is a lot of times, man, what we're talking about using here is you know human-grade you know fish and seafood. You know you're not gonna see a whole lot of you know repurposed uh, you know uh, 
you know, squid and clam cubes from the uh, like a normal fish store type stuff, or you know, fish uh, aquarium grade, I guess, you know, kind of thing. And the reason for that is a lot of those things are frozen and they don't really thaw all that well, you know, particularly mysis. You know, you don't see a lot of mice, mysis like mixes uh, because those things are super, super, super delicate. You know, they're often like frozen on the boat or near the boat at least. And, you know, once you thaw them, mixing them up with something else, they just totally deteriorate. So, you know, it's a really difficult thing to do to thaw brine shrimp or specifically mysis shrimp and then have them whole, maintain their, you know, whole shape when they uh, go back into the original structure or the new structure. So you just don't see that. And also like, you know, squid, man, why am I gonna buy a, you know, $5 thing or $10 thing, a little squid cubes when for 10 bucks I can get, you know, a whole package of uh, actual squid and just chop it up myself, you know. And it's probably, the stuff you get at the food or the, the uh, store is probably a higher grade than it is even in the fish grade. So, there you go. All right, so here we go, ma'am. We're going to start it up. I finished my uh, reef chili chori. I oh, finished yeah, cool. like how long it's going to last. So, I, what I would say, is for all of you thinking about doing this, try intentionally to make a really small batch yeah. to begin with because you're gonna learn something from the first time and then you're gonna be like, man, I got three years worth of this and mm. I did it wrong. You know, like I don't like the size that I made out yeah. of it. So make the fish food per part first because, you know, adding in these powders and whatnot later on, that's the easy part, yeah. right? It's getting the fish, uh, you know, uh, grade size right. So make really tiny amounts of it. And, mm. you know, for a lot of people, you know, if you do it by hand, I can make like two months worth and I'm not like tempted to use a food processor and end up with two years worth, right? <laughs> All right. Well, so. and, uh, one thing I did that helps with like determining size is well, this is why we kind of have these beakers full of water up here is uh you can just take a little bit after you chopped it up or while you're chopping it up just put it in yeah, there spin it around in water to, like maybe uh, see if it's uh, yeah, see, see if it's if right see it. uh yeah but yeah put it in a little beaker of water and you can kind of spin it around and see like hey does this break up into the size that yeah. i had anticipated uh, and uh, you know sprinkle a little bit in the tank you know a little bit uh, at a time, you know, and try to figure out like, hey man, like this is a good, good rhythm. I gotta tell you, I think this is one of the coolest, you know, extensions of the hobby. Yeah. It really puts you in tune with the tank. It makes you feel like, you know, you're really taking care of everything. It's, you know, what it, WWC is doing to have their success. So, cool. All right, first thing we're gonna do is uh, we got a piece of cod here and we're gonna, just gonna cut it up in, by hand. And so, you know, let's pretend you didn't want to go out and buy a food processor right. because, hey, I don't want to store another food processor in my house. I don't want to buy a $35 guy. So first thing we're going to do is just cut off a piece of it. Yeah. So what do we do with it? <laughs> While we're cutting it up, it comes up with the uh, shoestrings and cubies. Yep. Shoe so like the, the knife skills guy, <laughs> I went on a date with my wife once. They taught me uh, oh, how to Oh, is that where it came it. from? It's like, you got to think about the end game, man. You want cubes? <laughs> you got to start with shoestrings. So like what we're going to do is just kind of cut it in half first, I think. Because it's pretty thick, yeah. Yeah, this one's kind of thick. And then we'll cut it into what would be like little french fries or shoestrings or whatnot. Hmm. Just to kind of get it into a shape that we can start with. Look at that close up. That's good. Oh look! Oh man, is it working? Real, real wow! Look cooking at that boom. show. All right. So and then we want to go into cubes, right? So we'll turn it around and we'll start cutting around. <laughs> You're a brave right. man. I know it. So I said over under on uh, losing my finger today is about 50 50 uh 50 50 so if you're like at the line in vegas i go bet right now <laughs> uh there we go all right ah shoestrings and kiwis all right so if you had fish man that uh we're gonna feed uh eat this big which then uh there big we go predatory type tank yeah maybe. i don't know like which is like probably nobody yeah so that would be a big but you're not gonna do that so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys, you do this one, man, so. Oh, that's my favorite part. Yeah, this is your favorite part. So, like, you could, you know, use a knife and just kind of keep going through it. Uh, I like to use a cleaver, you know. This thing is heavy. Yeah, if you don't got a cleaver, it's like only 17 bucks at Costco, uh, the wholesale one, or not the wholesale, the business one, anyway. Yeah. So buy a cheap one, doesn't need to be fancy. And just chop it. So, when you're chopping it up, just let the weight of the thing do, uh, you know, all the work for you. 
and just kind of let it go through. And so the reason that we're, we're chopping it this way is because visually you know when to stop now. It takes an extra couple of minutes here uh, than a food processor, but you know what? Like, I don't throw my hamburger in a food processor either. Like, uh, and I have absolutely have taken steak, beef, and yeah. used a cleaver to make my own hamburgers at home because it does a really awesome job. There's a, you know, Food Labs article about that. But, like, uh, yeah, you can get a real good idea of the size of particle here. And, I mean, I think I'm going to let him do this for about another minute, and then we'll just show you the end game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys get the general gist of it. Yeah, it doesn't actually take that long, so I'd say it's about halfway there right now. Uh, and again, man, you're like not trying to like wax through it; just kind of let the let the uh, hammer do the or the cleaver do the job for you. Sharp, good sharp cleaver. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Oh, so that's, that's where what it, it looks is. like in the, in the end. All right. So when we're done, uh, on and this guy, yeah, just throw it on there. All right, if you say so. Or you can see see the particle size that we got to. So yeah, when we're done here, I mean, our hands are gonna stink so bad when we're done. <laughs> but it just kind of turns into a, a, a mush here, you know, not a mush, but a little like a. Uh, it looks mushy, but there's actually chunks in little there. Little chunks, yeah. yeah. And so when uh, I'm gonna, oh man, we should have. There's, you or brought gloves. But I know. Should have used them. It's too late now. All right. So inside of here, we're gonna pour a little water in here. I'm gonna take a little bit of the cod that we had chopped up and you're gonna see particle size hopefully you can see this in the in camera Just lay that beaker on top of the black thing there. all right yeah, there you there go. go so you can kind of see here you know like how big each of those little particles are like a lot of them are tiny there's big ones and you just keep chopping until you get the size that you want all right so that is uh, the, uh, what I call the chopping method, I guess. Uh, Dave, maybe you could clear that guy out for us. Uh, here you go. Oh, yeah. All right. So, you know, you chop up as much as you need and, you know, uh, uh, the cod. But you can all go ahead and try other fish. So, like we did. All, what we else did we do with We there? also did tuna. We got a piece of tuna in there? Yeah. Ah, there we go. There we go. So we got tuna. Is, I think this is like a yellowfin tuna, and we just chopped this up the exact same way. Got it into the size that we would like to use, and uh, you know, really, it was pretty easy. You know, the same way. And yeah. oh, there it is, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to chop it up, and you know, I guess we'll just kind of show it too as soon as uh, Dave gets back. Pretty much the same size, little tiny cubies. Yeah, I mean you can see it just kind of breaks up in, into little pieces, you know. And, and then, and of course, we're adding it all together in one big giant blend. All right. So I don't know if you can see it or not. Hopefully you can. But it creates kind of a little grade of all kinds of different little sizes of mm -hmm. the stuff, you know. And if you want smaller, we're definitely going to show you how to create smaller than that uh, or a more uniform size of piece. But again, I mean, you don't have to go out and buy a ton of equipment. Uh, you can just use whatever knife you have around your house and just chop it up by hand, uh, you know, and have a fun little project on the side. Also, there's other cool things you can do. So, uh, kind of my favorite part. Yeah, the, okay. there it is, man. So, does anybody know what this guy is right here? It is a Parmesan uh, cheese grater. Uh, so, like, uh, you know, you go to your Olive Garden. And like, would you like some more? Yes, I would. So, uh, and here's my one of my favorites is actually uh, the little base scallops. You know, you can use the big scallops, little ones. I'm gonna let uh, let you do it, man. Yeah, this I mean, is, you said it was your favorite. We, uh, part. we did. We found this out. So, what was it months ago? A few months ago or so? We did this. We kind of did our own DIY fish food with the CS team. All of us got together and we just we had the food processor. We had this anything that looked like it could chop stuff into little bits. Uh, we did, and then we found that these scallops and uh, I think frozen shrimp too, but scallops uh, just, oh, they, look at that. They shred into the perfect size, and not only that, but when you're done with them, they don't turn into mush too, so they hold they hold the shaving size, and then you, I mean, we added a bunch in here too, but you go through a pack of these and you've got frozen scallops for days. Oh, yeah, so like this is what I, I'd say is all the tools that we're using here, you don't necessarily need to use the exact ones we're using. Because you know, just kind of go down the kitchen near your own kitchen, or go down the kitchen aisle and start looking at 
what kind of food, you know, would produce the right size of food that I want for my tank, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, here, man, we'll throw a little of these guys in here. And hopefully you can see it. I don't know where the little black uh, guy went. Right and uh, Dave, maybe swap me out. And you know, there's little stringies in there, and you can just see they're they create these tiny little things that are perfect for the smaller fish. Mm -hmm. So you know that is uh, really what we're looking for. And so one of the things that you'll notice here is the difference with this guy is we're using them frozen, right? And so I, uh, if yeah. I tried to put like a non-frozen thing in the grater, mush. it's just going to turn to mush. Yeah. And so, you know, everybody has their favorite way of doing this. I like to use predominantly frozen stuff just because it's way easier to get a unified. Uh, when I'm using a uh, powered equipment or something like this, I like to use frozen stuff just because I can get a real uniform mm -hmm. uh, size uh, of, uh, you know, food after yeah, when I'm done, the results rather. So, yeah, so is there a big uh, uh, scallop in there somewhere? Yeah, I mean, we got these ones too. So, I mean, I don't know the nutritional value between a bay scallop and, uh, you know, a big old diver scallop. Probably almost no difference, really. Uh, you know, except for these are the ones that we like to eat, right? <laughs> Uh, but you know this guy was like uh, what three times as much man. It was like 30 oh, bucks a pound 30 bucks a pound for the big ones and like 18 bucks a pound. Okay, so for the, double the other one? Yeah, so you know it works the same way though, you know he comes all out and we got to just tap this one out So the one thing about them though is these are like you got to remember like what you're working with so the thing that uh, it comes out in the way that you the tool that you're using so these guys when I'm shaving it off the maximum length of any one of these things will never be longer than you know a tiny little base scallop uh. in this case you can see it's having a hard time coming out just a little bit and that's because longer the scallop is just longer stuff. man so yeah so the little spaghetti strings of this stuff will actually be you know longer and hopefully we get them out uh, all right thawing a little bit Yep, uh, so I don't know if you got a little, maybe your knife, maybe come pull them out. But yeah, so the little, the, the, these are going to be longer. They're going to be an inch and a half little shreds that come out of this thing because I'm using a longer style. Yeah, I mean, you can just see it as like noodles almost. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there you go. All right. And you, so, you see, we're just kind of throwing this all into one because in the end, we'll just mix it all up and it, it will be a fish food in the end, you know, so. We're just throwing it all in the cup and you can just mix it up in yeah. a bowl. We're putting it in a cup for you guys right now, but mix it up in your bowl and you know, then we'll find a couple of different ways that you'd feed it. So here's a question for you. Yeah. What shoot? I mean we're talking about using scallops, talk about using cod, we use some tuna here, like what what is some stuff that you you personally wouldn't use? I, so I haven't tried using salmon, but I'd be a little worried that the salmon uh, would add too much oil to the water. Okay. Right? And so when I was looking Stammer. today, I saw you know, there's different types of salmon. So you have your like, you know, farmed Atlantic salmon, mm -hmm. which tends to have like super thick, ri you know, ribbons of fat in it. Mm -hmm. And then you had like uh, your Copper River type salmon or whatnot. And like th those types of things generally have way less visible fat in it. And so I guess I'd pick that if mm -hmm. I was going to go after that. But I guess I, I'm looking for, you know, you know, more protein than fat in general. I, mean, I can't tell you that that's like, yeah. you know, for sure. That's just the way I like to do it. That makes sense. Uh, and, and then it's probably stuff that prepared, like you have to really put some effort into. Oh yeah, like, like those things, man. These things? Yeah, is that where you're going with That's this? where I'm going oh, with it. All right, yeah, don't do these, man. Yeah, I, I don't know, you can if you want, I wouldn't do these. So, first time man, when I was making reef chili, uh, you know, frozen version a million years ago, like I want the whole thing, you know, I want to put clams and stuff in here. So, you know, we got your, you know, average clam, uh, yeah, you can see in here. So we split a couple of them open so you can see the, like the tiny little bit of stuff that you would scoop the out effort. of here. Yeah, because yeah. I almost stabbed myself worse on these. Yeah, than I else. mean, you're chucking, you know, mussels and stuff. You can see there's a, absolutely some goo or whatever in there, but man, like, for the amount of work you need to do to open one of these guys up for the tiny amount of food that's in there, yeah. uh, not worth it, man. Just boil them and eat them yourself for dinner. Yeah, eat them, man, <laughs> eat them. Like, save them for yourself, don't put them in the fish. And so one of the other things is uh, pretty common is you'll see like a uh, seafood mix at an Asian store. Mm -hmm. So at an Asian store, they'll often have clams and uh, squid and right. you know cuttlefish and all that kind of stuff all mixed together. And, frozen and kind of already cut up. 
And that's a, you know, usually there's no shelves and stuff in that, so that's a good one to just send right through the, the you know, grater or some type of food processor attachment. Uh, and I don't think you know, this one is probably going to want to thaw. We'll, we'll mess with it in just a second. Would but uh, no, here, leave it out for a second. But uh, yeah, so the you know those Asian store foods are, are pretty pretty popular. The only thing I'm going to say is, you know, we found some bags of like clams and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And what I found is when you you know blended those up, uh, they smell terrible. Oh man. yeah, like the like the whole cleared the whole lunchroom, man. Uh, <laughs> it cleared the whole lunchroom. It's just super, super, super terrible. And it just clouds the water. So it might be like a little bit better for like a, you know, coral food or something that's yeah. going to get pulverized than it is a fish food. Yeah. I just personally stay away from the shellfish myself just because they don't form a, you know, uniform size and mm. Yeah, like just kind of turn to goo. So yeah. that'd be myself. Other people, do what you want. If you want to spend all the time shucking oysters and stuff like that, feel free. It's a lot of work. Uh, it is a lot of work. It's kind of expensive. Uh, all right. So these, uh, I got a Costco. So this is one of the you know big places I pick up seafood for this kind of thing because it's cheap. Yeah. So a um, mixed bag at Costco. Uh, well, they, oh yeah, a mixed bag. They have a super good mixed bag mm. of uh, seafood at Costco sometimes. They also have often have fresh seafood there. Yeah. Uh, you know, almost always actually. Uh, not at the you know, the one I went to for business. Like <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so pick up the fresh stuff. But I also usually pick up you know frozen shrimp and stuff like that because it's just uh, super easy to work with. It's right. cheap and you know really does the job. But mm. feel free to get you know fresh stuff if you want. It's just a lot harder to work with and get uniform sizes and pieces out yeah. of it. So you know, and you know some of the stuff you're gonna have to thaw too. So you're gonna look at. You know this guy right here, big chunk of calamari tubes. Yeah, right. So this needs a thaw to be used to some degree. Maybe right. not a hundred percent. We'll probably try to give it a, a whack and see if we can chop it up just a little bit. Send it through the food processor. But it's you know roughly half the little leggies and half uh, of the tops of the squid. Uh -huh. And so you know one of the things I'll say about squid is like makes these tend to be better for like a bigger fish because they're chewy. You know, like where the rest of this food kind of tends to break apart. Uh, yeah. It has like a grain to it. These things are chewy. So, you know, your like trigger fish and stuff like that tend to like yeah. it more than that like, you know, your clownfish, right? So that's a good point actually too, is uh, things like this, you know, doesn't have like a flakiness to it, your, your scallop necessarily, mm. or a shrimp definitely. I mean, this is like a piece of protein, right? <clears throat> yeah. So with the, the shrimp, this is just a piece of protein, you know, like almost all the way protein and probably a little bit of water, right? Yeah. And, you know, this thing just isn't going to deteriorate the same way as like a piece of cod. So yeah. a piece of cod is a flaky fish and it's just, you know, going to break up much more rapidly. So, you know, you know, think about the types of fish. And again, like the, one of the best things you can do is just chop up a couple of them or uh, whatever you're going to do, whatever way you're going to do it. Go put it in the tank and say, yep, oh, that is the way I want to do it. Or, nope, that was too big, that was too small. Yeah. And then go back and make sure you're doing it the way and then finish the project that way. So, because it's always going to be different for each one of your fish. So, this guy right here, the uh, shrimp. We get, we get, we always get the ones, but you don't want them with the, the you know, the bodies or what, or the, the shell. shell. No yeah. shell, right? They usually come with a tail, though. So, I'm just going to cut the tail off, but you could, you know, go ahead and, like, uh, thaw them and pull it off. There's probably a little bit of meat in there that's being wasted, mm -hmm. I guess. But you know what? This guy also. Well, this guy's kind of jammed now. Full of that big guy. Uh, but uh, we got to get a fork. Can you give me a fork or something? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll wait for Dave. Uh, anything that we can get, you know, the the squid or the scallop out of there. So that one works super, super good with with uh, the shrimp as well. Yeah. Right. So I, I haven't really actually tried to chop this up by hand. Uh, I'll you know. clean it in the sink. <laughs> Perfect. I haven't actually tried to chop chop up, you know, certainly not frozen shrimp by hand, so I, I don't think that would work. Uh, but, you know, by hand, I guess you could probably do it if it was thawed. But it works really good in the in the cheese grater attachment, actually, and it puts out nice little pieces. So uh, go ahead and try that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else here, man, that... Uh, what else have we would we do by hand? Can you think uh, of anything? 
Well, I mean, we haven't talked about the food processor in there. I think you yep. have different attachments on that one. All right, we're going to move on to the food processor then. All right, all right. So, yeah, my hand is so, again, one of the things a lot of people talk about is using a blender. Feel free to use a blender if you want. I find it useless. Uh, I find the blender like just turns it all to mush and keeps the chunks on the top, the bottom turns into goo, and it, it's really hard to get a uniform you know, size. And just before we go to the blender, I guess I'll just throw this out here again. So, just like the uh, just like the scallops, the shrimp has a texture to it that one more. that really leans itself to this little. I like this thing. This thing is so fun. Like turn yourself into little spaghetti pieces. Little Parmesan, Parmesan shrimp. All right, there, there we go. go. Oh, look at that. All right, all right so yeah, so uh, maybe we can get a little zoom in here on this. But yeah, it's just tiny little pieces that came out of that thing. You know, you spend 10 minutes and you probably got, uh, you know, six months worth That's of these a little guys. Yeah, you mix it in with the other food that you want to do. And that Parmesan grater is like a couple bucks, so uh, less than 10 bucks maybe. This I got at Target for yeah, you know, 10 cheap. bucks. OXO, yeah. OXO, you do everything right. All right, <laughs> cool. Uh, and so, you know, and then the next thing is, is Hey, another dry thing, man, just is just, again, we're making like a fish food base and we'll start talking about coral stuff in, in probably about 10 minutes here. But, yeah. you know, fish food, people like nori, right? And so you feed your fish nori and you can do it in a, like by, you know, clipping it to the side of the tank, but frankly, that's ugly. Uh, I, the way I used to do it is, uh, so I, rather than do all this DIY type stuff, I used to take all the frozen cubes from the, the Hakari cubes. So it was uh, spirulina brine, PE mysis, you know, colonis, all this other stuff. But uh, I'd soak it all in a bowl of DI of RODI water and just let it sit there and, and defrost. Now, of course, Ryan mentions that that breaks down the uh, the integrity of the like the, the shrimp bodies, and then refreezing it just turns it into mush. But uh, what I'd also do is uh, in RODI water is lay down some uh, nori sheets in RODI water, let it soak it all the water up, and then I can just kind of rub it together and it turns into little tiny flakes, like chewable pieces for my tangs and stuff. Uh, I guess you could put Celcon or Celco in there also if you're yeah. gonna do that to fortify it, but. So any dry food, man, will soak up all kinds of great things. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, this is a, a, you know, nori, you can just take it out of here. We could chop it up into bits. I could probably just take it and crumble it in my yeah. hands. Yeah, yeah. I can mix it in here and what it's gonna do is gonna soak up all of uh, the oils and stuff that are coming out of the fish and uh, add nutrients to a, a dry product. And in fact, you know, that's one of the other things that people do here is you can add, you know, freeze dried uh, krill or, you know, freeze dried mysa shrimp or something because the mysa shrimp, man, is like, you know, what, probably 90% water, yeah. maybe, maybe more, you know? Uh, and so, when we have the freeze dried stuff, I can go ahead and take, you know, like my Celco, or I can take, uh, you know, like a Brightwell's uh, amino acid uh, mm -hmm. concentrate, a coral amino yeah, thing yeah. that WWC uses, and soak it up into this mysis. This now is the most nutritious mysis known to man. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and it's filled with, you know, really, really easy for the coral fish to use, uh, you know, components of protein and, and lipids and whatnot to make fats, mm -hmm. uh, fatty acids, and just super, super highly, you know, digestible uh, nutrition and concentrated, right? So a lot of people will mix these things in. It's freeze dried, so it'll break up a little bit yeah. for sure when you're mixing it up. But it comes in different sizes, you know, here's a, a big krill. Uh, you can get like a, littler krill here you know this guy yeah you know, this will have like you know powder even in it which will feed your corals and whatnot so think about the dehydrated stuff you know not just that there's also other types of algae. <clears throat> you know yeah like, the nori sheets is really all i've been familiar with but like this yeah. stuff they call so a sea lattice which is pretty much just ulva uh yeah. if you guys uh, for those of you running refugiums and stuff it's like the lettuce algae yep. uh but ulva and i think this is uh, dolce or dulce or something it's palmaria pomata there uh, you go. brown or red algae so you know, uh, randy actually tasted it earlier it's not good yeah don't don't taste it that was, that was pretty funny to watch though <laughs>
Yeah. Those uh, of you who yeah. use tobacco that way, it's no. Yeah, don't use if you ever use beech nut, it looks very light, much like that. Uh, <laughs> don't taste it though. Uh, so you probably want in this case, you probably want to chop it up a little bit before you put it in there, yeah, or tear it sure. apart by hand or yeah. whatnot. The cleaver and trick will probably work for that too. Cleaver trick. Uh, uh, yeah, I bet you maybe that one you got to slice through because it's kind of like not chewy, soft, but yeah. Yeah, it's soft. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move on to the blender guy here. Yeah. Right? Oh, not the blender, the food processor. Again, blender, bad. Food processor, good. <laughs> okay. So with the food processor, you really got like, you know, three main ways to uh, chop this up. And again, you know, much like uh, cooking in your house, you got to think about what is the end result that I want this thing to look like and uh, then use the right tool to help you get there. And so a lot of people will use this guy right here. You know, they're going to use the, you know, I don't know what you call this attachment. The standard blade, Standard guess, blade standard for your processor blade. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what this guy's going to do? Oh. And with frozen stuff, if you're good at it, you can get pretty good at just kind of getting a pulse and, you know, chopping it up into the exact size you need, especially if you do one piece of fish at a time and not try to dump it all in there and whip it up. Uh, if you do it one piece at a time, get the size that you want, put that aside, get the work the next type of fish, put that in there, and then get that to the right size you want and mix it in. That is probably going to be the best way to get the results of this. If you do it with non-frozen food, expect mush. You know, expect it to turn into like a goo, you yeah. know? Uh, and, you know, mm. the goo can be fed to the tank. It, it, just isn't my preference of the way that I like to feed the tank, you know. <laughs> so uh, I again, I'm trying. I try to use frozen all, all the time, mm -hmm. frozen types of food instead, so I can get the size particles that I'm looking for instead of the goo. So uh, the other thing is uh, this disc, and so you you get different attachments. With the thirty-five dollar guy, you get pretty cheap attachments. And you know what? We're missing one piece to this thing. Uh, there's a little rod guy. Uh, oh. It goes right here. So it's a little rod that goes up. Maybe Dave, you can find it. But uh, there is. Strainer. It's a black, black thing. So uh, this thing has two sides to it. Mm -hmm. It has a cheese grater thing. So uh, which we tried manually when we were doing it with CS. Oh, yeah. We tried the manual cheese grater thing. Uh, it actually it can work, and there's different sizes of the holes, you know, so you can mm -hmm. make like bigger, thicker pieces. It did. The only problem is like. You gotta watch your thumbs, cause yeah, with that shrimp, uh, <laughs> I mean, no good. You only get so many passes between before you right at your thumb. So yep, over under on uh, injury, it just goes up <sighs> like drastically. Yeah. So, uh, but with a piece of frozen cod, man, you can actually use a cheese grater pretty good. Yeah. You know, and you know that's washable and mm. stuff. Maybe your spouse never knows. Yeah. Uh, but uh, or you buy your own. <laughs> but uh, you know it has a little thing on it for different sizes. You can do like Parmesan size. You can do mm -hmm. big size, whatever. Uh, this usually only comes with one size, uh, but you can send it through more than once if you want. There you, you go. Know, you can send yeah. it all through, and you can send it through again if you want to like really pulverize it. Yeah. Uh, then it also has a blade attachment, and so I guess I really wouldn't think about using the blade attachment very often mm -hmm. unless I was doing like a fish only tank. And there we go. Uh, I was doing a fish only tank. And in that case, you get really big chunks. You know, you right. big fish like this that just like to tear through big chunks and mm. stuff. Uh, then maybe I would uh, think about that. But most of the time, I, I wouldn't use that blade guy. Uh, my favorite by far is actually this the the cheese grater. Oh uh, yeah, that's almost the only way that I would probably use the food processor. So, uh, although. I did get pretty good results with the shrimp uh, and just you know yeah. pulsing it until I got what I wanted. Uh, the slices on this, that was the... Uh, yeah, there you go. Shrimp. So maybe you can see this uh, right here. There he is. Yeah. It's a slice of shrimp. It's That's just a like slice a sliver. of shrimp. So that may be good for like a big tigger fish or something, uh, trigger fish, and, uh, but like not for your clownfish. Yeah. Right? Uh, but what was this one? That's the shrimp made by the food processor on the cheese grater side. Okay, so in the trees, cheese grater thing, uh, hopefully you can see, 
uh, you know, made little ribbons of it. Not you know? as thin as the uh, handheld par Parmesan grater. Yeah, not the Parmesan grater. So it's a bigger chunk. It's a little chunks. Yeah. But it also, you know, gets a variety of sizes in there, and you can kind of maybe hopefully see hmm. uh, different stuff in there. Uh, and then was, did you see the other one in there that was, no, this is all shrimp again, the human yeah. grade, just normal shrimp. Uh -huh. And then there was the one that we did, we did with the blade. Uh, uh, probably the one with not labeled. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's this guy. And so this one actually turned it into little cubes and it's gonna be probably harder to see. Uh, I'll let you look at it for a second. Uh, we'll see if we can move it into this water here a little bit. So with the shrimp, it actually did a really good job. So uh, I'll see if we can see it. I, I, I'm gonna love to see this. I'll watch this thing afterward and see how much of this you can see. But uh, it did a really good job of turning it into little cubes instead of ribbons. Uh, when oh, there you go. That's a good job. Uh, instead of little ribbons when you do it. So that was pretty cool. And hmm. so uh, what we'll do is go ahead and turn this thing on and we'll uh, whip some up, man. Yeah, for sure. All right, uh, so, so you need some shrimps. I need some shrimps, man. So you know what I'm gonna do is, uh, I think we're just gonna like throw a bunch of different foods in here. Okay. Uh, we've got frozen cod pieces too. Yep, yeah, let's, let's chop that up. Or maybe uh, give me like a couple extra shrimps, man. Okay. Don't be so cheap with the shrimp. <laughs> we're making months worth of food here. All right, I mean, I mean, it's probably gonna be loud, so sorry. All right. If you're listening in your car, all right, there we go. Yeah, this is like uh, for uh, your podcast. Terrible content. <laughs> there we go, yeah, so it did exactly what we said here. In this case, it shot out tiny little uh, uh, ribbons of the shrimp. Yeah. Worked out really perfect, man. Those are the type of size of food that I'd like to feed. The best part, uh, you know, uh, one of the best parts about making your own DIY food is whatever you decide not to use for your fish tank, uh, you have yourself a little seafood dinner that night. Seafood dinner. That's yep, I'm into it. All right. <laughs> All right, so here's your, what was this, cod? That's, for, yeah, Atlantic cod. All Frozen. right, then chop so, it up for me. All right, well, maybe I'll try this guy. I don't trust my fingers around either of us. Yeah, I don't know. I almost cut off his thumb earlier. And it was a close <laughs> call. All right, well, there, man. That's why. Nice. Well, you gotta love a cleaver, man. That's just fun. Are, I'm, I gotta get one for home. I don't have a cleaver. I mean, uh, you know, my wife got me one for uh, Christmas. I, oh. I never used it, and I made hamburger with it. I'm like, man, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, cool. So one thing I notice here about the cod is you, you, some people might want to send that through twice. It's really long, yeah. skinny, really long, thick, skinny chunks. Yeah, because it's cutting this way, right? right? Yeah. And so when it goes down, you're thinking about you know what I'm making here, <coughs> and I'm making th long ribbons. So if I didn't want to do that and I wanted to make them shorter, just then I just chop this guy in half. Now, if I put it in this way, yeah. the longest ribbon will be, you know, half an inch or whatnot. Sure. If I go ahead and chop it again, it's now, man, it's going to be little teeny bits. Yeah. So, you know, you just kind of chop it up for like maybe a different size fish in here. So I want different size. Uh, but it's definitely yeah. Big so yeah, it makes a huge difference in the size that comes out. So you got to think about the well, the size of the thing you're using and the tool that's using it. Mm -hmm. So again, a little different if you're using this tool because you can just keep pulsing until you get there. Right. Uh, but you know, there might be some inconsistencies still even after pulsing it though. Uh, right? you, there definitely can be. Yeah. And this thing is super dangerous in the essence that, like, you go too far, mush. Okay. Right? Yeah. So this, I'm cutting it into pieces. This I'm just tearing it all up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, what else we got there? Um, frozen stuff, but not much else. We got the cod. Let's try that calamari. Do you think we can get through it? We, you can cut us off a chunk. It's pretty rubbery. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna give this guy. I mean, this thing's gonna work. Be worth this <laughs> this money this day. So. Oh. Oh, there's uh, a chunk casualties. of casualties. 
All right, so we got a whole bunch of uh, little little uh, tentacles here. Chop those guys up. Now the nature of the tentacles is they're you know only a quarter inch wide to begin with, so these are going to come out a totally different size. All right, so now we got like a pretty good fish food base in here. All right, right. Uh, and you could probably go ahead and turn this into uh, fish food at, at the moment, yeah. right? So this is gonna be way, way, way more nutritious than like your, oh yeah, we got some other stuff in there. That was all by the hand, by the way. Yeah, this was by hand and by yeah. a Parmesan grater. Yeah, this is probably two months worth of food in here, at least a month, you know? It took 10 minutes to make. So, <coughs> yeah, so I, I think we have, what we have here is a, a mix of particle sizes that have a way, way, way higher protein and yeah. lipid content than your average, you know, water-based shrimp, yeah, you know, or freshwater shrimp. So, well, and and you think in the long run for the amount that you can actually make uh, your own, like maybe if you feel like making two or three months worth, then buying frozen. I mean, paying overnight shipping costs for frozen, paying for well, it's definitely you know, more expensive. This to is do this you, is to DIY it or well, right now this is cheaper. Yeah, uh, like a, a thing a bag of shrimp and stuff. Yeah, because uh, most of what you're paying for is water in those cubes, water inside of the little brine shrimp, right. and water on the outside of the brine shrimp to make it into that little cube. So most of what you're buying is water. So for, you know, you know, ounce for ounce, you know, if you're buying protein and uh, lipids uh, and carbohydrates, like buying human food is gonna be way, way, way cheaper. Huh. Yeah, so now uh, what you do to like, you know, make this food is uh, first unplug it so you don't cut off your fingers. <coughs> Uh, you got a couple of different options here to what do you want to do with it. Uh, you got a bag somewhere? I thought we made Ziploc bags. Yep. Yeah, Ziploc right bags. Here. So this is the number one thing that most people are going to do. And that is just put it into a small like quart size freezer bag. And the freezer bag is good because they're thicker and they're going to hold up better to what you're doing here. Uh, and so we'll just like go ahead and I'm just going to scoop some out, I guess. You know, probably didn't make enough here to, you know, do what I'm going to do here. But, you know, just kind of scoop these guys in and put it in here, you know. And if I let it thaw a little bit, it'll turn into a, a little bit more mush, yeah. you know. Uh, right now it's still like kind of hard and frozen mm -hmm. and, and it's you know, more particle sizes. But once it's thawed, you know, you're just gonna push it into a, kind of a flat pack and then let it freeze. And you can go ahead and break some off. But what I actually like to do is put it into the flat pack, let it freeze, and then come back with uh, my knife or whatever kind of knife yeah. and chop it into cubes and then use the cubes. Yeah, yeah right? So like alternatively, they have uh, these little guys Dr. Tim's makes a, a you know little silicone you know fish food tray, so uh, he makes it specific for this purpose, right? I, I like this. I like the rubber version because I've uh, at I think it was like Bed Bath and Beyond or something. I went and found these little tiny cube trays, like about the same size cube, uh, and they're hard. They're, I mean, they're hard plastic, and you can use them pretty well. But I, you have to after you freeze all your food in there, you really have to, to beat get to get the stuff out. But the rubber, the yeah, these silicone guys yeah. are way, way, way easier to get them out afterward. For sure. This is uh, my only feedback uh, on this thing huh. is when you're using stuff like this, it's really hard to get the food actually into it to form an actual cube. Right. 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 Uh, it gets air stuck down there, and so like when you pop it out, they're like half cubes half right. the time. Right. And so. I don't know, man. For some people, it could be worth the effort. To me, I'd rather just come back and chop it back up after it's frozen into the size that I yeah. want to use. Because I don't necessarily want to use these little sizes. I can make up my own. Yeah. You know? And so it's up to you. Another thing that people do a lot is uh, take a piece of parchment paper, lay it down, and then put an egg crate over it. Oh, and yeah. I yeah. saw that. And then you can smear the, the, the fit fish food into the egg crate and create little thinner cubes, That's right? That's really a good idea. Yeah, the cool part, the egg crate doesn't hold the air in the bottom, mm -hmm. right? And so, like, it just kind of pushes out the sides. And so you can make cubes a little easier that way. Yeah. But, like you said, man, now they're kind of stuck in there, too. So they're a little hard to, like, go pop each one out individually. <laughs> uh, it's not, like, just twisting them out or whatnot. Yeah. 
So that's you know pretty much it, man. Like uh, again, I guess what I, one thing I'd say is normally you spend a little bit more time on this. You probably have made more of this at, at the time. But mm -hmm. You can see this is just a beautiful mix of uh, sizes of this. I wonder if you can see it in here, man. I don't know. Like, you might might be able to punch in put, on put the Put a little bit of it in here. <clears throat> yeah, I mean you can see all the. Well, I don't know if you can see. Ah, oh, Dave, yeah, Dave's some... trying. Uh, you can see that it's all kinds of different little sizes in here. I probably put too much in now, but this is just fish food now, you know. Uh, and I haven't really done anything, you know, super important to it, or you know, turned it into a, anything other than it's just super high concentration of protein yeah. and, and fat for the fish, you know. All right. So you know what a lot of people will do now though is they'll make it more concentrated. So you know you can add something that has more fat in it, like Cellcon mm -hmm. or. Uh, even uh, cell co and I don't know this for sure, but I think cell kind of just cell co kind of diluted. Dilute a little bit. This yeah. one's kind of tough though because it needs to be refrigerated and not frozen, whereas this one's shelf stable, so it's what most people use. Mm -hmm. But it's a little waterier where this is like a thick paste, right? <clears throat> um, and so you know you'll add that in there. People also add like amino acids, like you said. You'll also add those uh, 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 the nori stuff yeah. into it. Yeah, yeah, I do the nori. Yep. So this is what I'm gonna tell you is in, we're gonna get to the coral portion of this in just a second here. Mm -hmm. Man, oh, we, we're like at 10 minutes left. We're I gonna know. go way long, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Cause we got a lot to say about this and I think it's just kind of fun. But, it's gonna be a fun one to come back and watch. Uh, yeah. And so what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna come back in next time, instead of just kind of talking about all the particle sizes and like, you know, the method of doing it. Yeah. We're gonna show you the recipe. exact recipe, yeah. man. Like. You know, four ounces of this, yeah. five ounces of that, you know, two shakes of that, <laughs> you know, whatever, Salt for right. the fish, right? right? And then we're going to take that fish base and then we'll turn it into the fish, fish and coral, coral. food, yeah. you know, for uh, the rest of them, right? So, uh, what does fish and coral food look like? Uh, so, you know, it's just this. Except for we're going to put a lot of other nutrients in it. And so a lot of those nutrients will actually like stick to this, you know, the powders and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and the other nutrients will suck out the nutrients from this, like the fats and stuff that would just kind of like go into the water. They'll go into the dry ingredients. And so... So we're talking like liquid type supplements. We're talking, you know, zero to however many micron type of... Uh, you know, dry part or dry powders and stuff like that. Yep. So and like all kinds of uh, corals in there. There's no way to like get the right food for all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, like they all take different sizes. A lot of them are all the way down to one micron. You know, the mouth size on the yeah. on the coral or coral polyp. Uh, and so it's just you got to get a wide range for all the different kinds of corals and try to hit it at different speeds even. Right. And so like we just got to kind of make a you know broadcast to be able to hit them all. Uh, and you know you, you can put various degrees of effort into this. So mm -hmm. uh, just as like a reminder, WWC would go ahead then and take uh, reefroids and they mix reefroids right in it. And so one of the beauties of mixing it in like right now is that you know part of the hard thing about something like reefroids is that it's a dry powder that mm -hmm. likes to float. Right. You know, and it takes a long time to rehydrate. Well, if I freeze it back into this, it's going to soak up all of the water. And by the time I rehydrate and put it back in the tank, It'll sink right it's down not powder the anymore, yeah. man. It will just, you know, go throughout the whole tank right away. That's so, cool. way, way better to mix it with this than it is to like try to spoon it in later mm -hmm. or you know rehydrate it. You know, same thing with the reef chili here. They add uh, the coral aminos from uh, from Brightwell. From Brightwell, right. you know, that's a liquid. And one of the reasons that they're using that one, I imagine, is because it's a lot more concentrated. So, like, I don't want to like glug 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 in the uh, what's the one from Two Little Fishes. Uh, the the acro power, power. Yeah. yeah, it's just too much water. I don't want to add that much water to you know my fish food. So you know something that's super concentrated makes a lot more mm. sense for this kind of application, especially because I want those powders to soak that nutrition up. So when the coral does capture, it's capable you know of sucking in that mm. nutrition. All right. So some of the things that people put in these things. Ah, you know we missed this one. I know. This is actually my favorite of the whole bunch. <laughs> uh, thank you, man, for bringing this out. Yeah, I just was thinking about it. I'm, I'm gonna coral, but mostly fish, probably like these little mouth mouth type fish, little antheas and yep. things with tiny mouths. So this is sushi eggs, you know, and I'm gonna butcher this because I don't know what it's called at all. And it's called flying fish row, but to mm. boco, to buco. 
something B, something B. Hey, you something. know, uh, yeah, you know how we got it. The, like this is the best part about how we got it. We walked into the sewer next to the sushi place, uh, and we said, "Hey, we want some of those." Great. I know. I said grocery store. It was a grocery store sushi place. Yeah. So like, hey man, can I get some of these? So here's a, just a couple of tidbits about it, though. So there are flying fish row, which is the the best one. Uh -huh. uh, its natural color is orange, like this. Uh, and they're tiny little guys, and yeah. the nature of an egg is what? It's protein and uh, fat, Straight man. up. Uh, that's all it is, you know, mm -hmm. it's like an egg yolk. So it's just super, super high concentration. Yeah, man, these little guys, I think uh, like a lot of LPS probably loves them. The fish love these guys. Now, I don't know what we just put in there, but <laughs> there is, uh, you know, the one thing about it is some of them are dyed. Uh -huh. and, you know, it's a food grade dyed, so I'm not like, you know, super worried about what, what it is, but like, don't get the black ones because it's like, uh, mm. you know, the green ones are like wasabi dye. Oh, yeah, that's, not, yeah, like that's that. not the one you want. So the natural color of a flying fish row is actually this orange. Mm. However, the especially probably the one we just used is probably Masago, okay. uh, which is like a different fish row, and it's actually like brown, it's natural color. It looks real orange. similar, and they dye it orange yeah. to be able to, you know, you know, Put it on substitute nice piece of sushi. It. Yeah, but it's a tiny fraction of the cost, and most people would never know the difference. Mm. So, you know, one of the things that you could probably do is just kind of mix it in with some water. You know, oh, yeah, you, the you'll usually be able to, you know, see it, you know, visually, yeah. uh, you know, like uh, whether or not it dyes the water. But they almost always actually say, so they're not going to trick you. If you buy the stuff, uh, and the best place to get it is definitely like a good Asian grocery store. Okay. But, you know, most of the time, it'll just say Masago on there or it'll say Flying Fish Row or okay. uh, the... In tea, flying fish rows, the one whatever. Want. Yeah, and actually, this one is probably the right thing because you can see it didn't turn the water all orange. Uh -uh. You know, so uh, uh, you can see the water is you know still not like turned it into an orange dye, which is what I generally see. Now, some of the eye eggs may have busted, so it gives it a little bit of color that I wouldn't be worried about. And again, it's a food grade thing, but preference I think for all of us uh, is uh, no dye, right? Yeah, exactly. But I gotta be honest, this is one of my favorite, 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 favorite things to put in a, a fish food. So it's worth a, a trip to the, the uh, store. Also though, there are places that sell them. Uh, you know, we don't have them out here. The dried uh, stuff? No, there's some frozen ones. So you can you can buy a uh, Kaplan row. Uh, you know what? I think, I think we here. have some of that. Oh yeah, right here. Uh, so there's like Kaplan row that you can buy. And uh, I don't know, Let's see here. They're like little scooper guy. Here we go. You know, these are even finer though, it looks like. Oh yeah. Yeah, sure. so but they're fish eggs, and fish eggs is just super, 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 you know, good food, man. It's like, like I mean the egg is the beginning of life, right? And it's just filled, like I mean you can just see how awesome that looks. They're about the same size. Mm -hmm. These guys are basically clear, so you know you got no dye in it. Uh, and you know, really, really awesome, man. Like I, I love, I love, love mixing this, and especially if I have small fish like uh, uh, anthias mm -hmm. and uh, you know, active fish that you know require high nutrition. Uh, hey, that's another thing, actually. Yeah. Where's the dry food? Ah, uh, there it is. <clears throat> so. Don't be afraid to mix in dry food with your fish food in okay. here too. So, you know, I'm just gonna especially totally since, butcher this Especially here. since it's, this is not a whole bunch of water. I, yeah. I don't have to worry about breaking down that into powder when I add it in here. Yeah, it's gonna just soak it up. And, uh, and you know what, even if it breaks apart, it, specifically this gets even more valuable when you're trying to feed your corals because it's right. okay that it breaks up and I'm trying to you know feed this super high density uh, nutrition to the corals mm -hmm. and you know one of the ones I definitely would think about here is the, the, the reef nutrition chroma boost here because it comes in different sizes and so uh, the for you guys you know most of you are not breeding fish but there's right. three sizes that are designed for breeding fish are super super small like the C1, B1, A1, or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And you can they can read and they're like you know, 50, down to 50 microns or something. Just like, it's dust. And you can see uh, on our website, there's like a ruler okay. and it'll show you oh, exactly yeah. how That's big it idea. is, right? Yeah. Uh, and then they also have a small, extra small, medium, mm -hmm. large. Those are pretty your self standard yeah, yeah, your standard pellet type. Yeah, thing. so yeah. like this guy right here is a C1, which I think is probably right out there. Pretty fine. It's, it's still a pellet. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's still a pellet here, but they're really, really tiny, tiny, tiny pellets. You know, they're probably uh, about a fourth the size of the egg there. 
but you know there's no problem mixing it right in with the, the fish food and getting it all in there it'll help uh, some of the LPS that would like to eat it and I have absolutely no you will almost certainly see this mixed in with the net you know recipe that we produce and yeah v2 of this series <laughs> this is 101 102 yeah. will give you a recipe 102 will be recipe time <laughs> uh so yeah i mean we just want to perfect it so we're just kind of letting people do this on their own and they'll give you like an idea hopefully pretty soon of like exactly what we're feeding these two tanks yeah. as part of the uh, hybrid series yeah, here we're going to change it up all right so uh, a couple other things that are all so coral foods. Of them, man coral foods so we got like you know arctic co copepod powder you know so this is like you know copepods that have actually like not not good enough that they're tiny we powderize was this a was this kind of the same thing that cyclopes used to be you know i i believe pretty so. close so something cyclo similar like for those of you who've been around for a long time uh a cyclopo cyclopes was a super super yeah. popular frozen uh food mm. like and I don't you could know what. get a big jar, a big jar of a dry powder version too, if I remember right. Yep, uh, yep, absolutely. So you, know, you can get a powdered guy. I'm just going to kind of go through a variety of them here. Yeah. Uh, we also have a micro fine dried brine shrimp. You know, so these are super, you know, fine Very brine fine. shrimp, just powderized into the smallest, smallest, smallest particles. And again, man, we're trying to get these things to the mouths of like SPS corals. I need to get a variety mm. of different sizes in there. So I might mix a little bit of that in. Okay, what was this thing called, man? Uh, you had the label I know, I had the label. Uh, Aston. It used to be called like Nutra Rose or something, but it has a super, super high concentration of red pigment in there. So uh, the coral can use it, yeah. the fish will definitely use it, your fish will definitely, especially clownfish, will be a much, much brighter color. Huh. I wish I could find that little envelope wherever I put it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, ants. There you go. Uh, all right, here. Oh, there it is. And yeah, we lost it. Anything that contains uh, Aston 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 So it's just red pigment, man. Uh, and so we'll have, I opened uh, it earlier, and uh, holy cow, does it make the board in your hands? Oh, red! Is that what the red spots are? Yeah, some that's of the red absolutely spots on the board. what that is. So oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, a little goes a long way. But you can, you know, increase the coloration of uh, all of your fish and corals, man. Or you I think we'll have some of that. Stupid word, but you can add color pigment to the the whole thing, and you know, make it. I don't know if this is a nutritious thing, but I know like a lot, a lot of fish breeders use this stuff to make hmm. the, the fish look more beautiful. Uh, then there's, you know, stuff out here like, you know, larval fish foods again, like this is a, a larval fish food. So people are breeding fish, you know, they're using you know, nutrition to feed tiny, tiny plankton right. type fish, right? Yeah. That are just hatched from an egg and they're trying to raise them up. Well, that same size food is also nutrition that, you know, a lot of different corals can capture. So, you know, there's a variety of different things out there. And, you know, the cool part of this is it's 200 to 300 micron size, uh, uh, 500 to 800 micron size. Yeah. Uh, we got three, 300 to 500. We have uh, 100 to 200. So these are real refined uh, and you know exactly I can get a range to cover a wide variety of mouth sizes oh, that yeah. the corals have been optimized to you know feed with so I mean there's so many of these types of things so you know we got your freeze-dried arctic copepod so this is the exact copepod we're talking about before but you know I wonder if we can tap a little bit out here there you go uh, maybe you could zoom in on that just a little bit more I don't know uh, oh, damn it. Uh, <laughs> Mix them together. That's super fine. All right, so you can see here, this is all like large copepods, you know, mm -hmm. and this is what happens when you powderize them. So it's, it's the same nutrition, but I've turned it into different forms for different types of corals that are capturing it in different sizes. Hmm. Uh, we also have freeze-dried rotifers, we have spirulina powder, other different types of freeze-dried copepods. It actually says, you know, the types you've gone there if you want to look at them. And, you know, then beyond that, we also got really cool stuff like uh, frozen stuff. Frozen yeah. stuff, man. So, like, I want to add a, a little bit of uh, different types of nutrition in here. I can add, you know, rotifers, uh, daphnia, zooplankton, all stuff. 
frozen in little jars, just squirt a little bit in there and uh, add uh, you know that kind of uh, paste into it. It's gonna add all kinds of little little uh, different size you know zooplankton and whatnot. You can get actual types of algae, different brands or gels yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah and these are cool. cool, man. Actually, they're like you know in a gelatin form, so even when they're frozen, you can still kind of squirt hmm. them out instead of having to wait to, to thaw them. Uh, they have the same kind of things with uh, the Arctic copepods, not freeze dried now, but frozen in that kind of uh, you know liquid format. And I think you're going to see some of these stuff sh you know show up on the bulk reef supply site because I asked Zach to go source some of them because I think oh, yeah. a lot of you guys are going to want to make the stuff at home, and we'll you know find ways to make it really easy for you guys to find. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of different places you can buy them. So though. speaking of finding it on bulk reef, okay, so we, you showed us like all of this stuff here, like. How much did you pay for? How much did okay. you pay for all? Yeah, that? so that's just like you know a really good point. I spent six hundred bucks on, on all the that. dry stuff. Yeah, and the, no, the dry and, and the frozen, frozen stuff, stuff, man, just to show this video. So yeah. it's over six hundred bucks, you know, and that's also actually where reef chili came from. So you know, this thing is the zooplankton, the you know uh, uh, a replacement lot of the stuff diet. You showed, yeah. yeah. There's like copepods, Daphnia, yeah. uh, Arctic copepods mm -hmm. in here. There is the spirulina, the Daphnia, like all the stuff that's in here. So, you know, one of the things is, uh, is you know, I buy the copepods. This is like a lifetime supply, to be honest. Uh, like in this, uh, For a single gonna, person? Yeah, but it's oh, only yeah. going to feed this thing, man. Uh, you know, it might last, you know, the year. But if I buy eight different <laughs> kinds of them, Holy cow, man, I got like eight years worth now because it, yeah. you don't use that much of this kind of stuff. Uh -huh. So, you know, with the reef chili is that it's all of those things just mixed together, yeah. right? Uh, and, you know, for 20 bucks this size or the like 13 bucks or something for the mm -hmm. small one. Mm -hmm. uh, now I can add all of that stuff with one thing into the fish food. Uh, yeah. And maybe we can kind of like do a little trio here. Probably can't see. It kind of blends together, like that. This is like a dozen different things mixed together. Yeah, it looks like a brown powder, but you can, when you get real close, you can see the difference. Uh, yeah. So there you go. So you know, again, uh, for, I'm sure all of you have heard this before because you guys watch this stuff all the time. But uh, one of the cool things about this one, it's not a big surprise, man. Uh, once you know what it is, uh, it's not a huge surprise that this and the uh, reefroids here are the only two ones that. You know, came out from the uh, University of Hawaii study that actually grew all three types of corals. They're gonna, they were growing, and substantially. You know, a lot of them actually, a couple of them killed the corals instead. <laughs> uh, so it's because it's just supernatural stuff. You yeah. know, uh, and it's just you know some of the prey that they've uh, grown up to to eat in the wild, and some of it they're just going to adjust to in the hmm. in in the captive environment. So, you know, again, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to mix in some krill, uh, soak it up. I wouldn't be uh, afraid to, you know, take my Selco and give my Selco, add a bunch of uh, lipids yeah. to it, you know, and just, you know, make it more and more and more and more nutritious. Heavy just, in, heavy out, right? Just lots of stuff that you play around with. Yeah, you Make so, your own blend. I like you, it. You can make whatever it is you want and you can add the amount. And so what do we, we keep talking about, like, uh, when you add, uh, all the stuff to your tank and nitrates and phosphate goes up. So what's the option? Yeah, what's the option? What do you do if like, yeah, like nitrates are going up and I don't know what to do? Or you feed less of it. Yeah, feed less, man. Uh, or <laughs> up, up your filtration, which is harder usually. Yeah, but yeah. like just stop. So when I'm you know making this stuff myself and I'm kind of adjusting it, I can look at my own tank mm. and in my own tank I can say, all right, so I just started this thing, you know, when I just started it, I'm only gonna feed this. So the XXL 750, they're not gonna see any of these patterns or anything in it because yeah. I'm only feeding the fish in here, right? You feed, you feed for what's the, what the mouse that's in the tank at the current time, right? Yep, yeah. boom. So then uh, like, hey, I'm a little bit farther down the road and I uh, got a bunch of frags in there. It's mm. not month one, man, it's month six and right. things are starting to you know, grow out. Uh, you know, maybe I add this, maybe I add that Brightwell amino acid in there. 
maybe I add you know a couple other things in, into it. Not you much. Know, uh, yeah, I don't. Add, I don't run dumping into it, man. Just a, a little bit, mm -hmm. and I just keep adding things more until you know I got a tank like the 900 over there where like I can throw the whole kitchen sink you can throw in, anything and, it's, in. And it's asking me more. Yeah. You know, like uh, <laughs> where is all the nutrition? Give it to me more, more, yeah. more. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so the benefit here is you get to you know adjust it to your tank, mm -hmm. and it's super easy, man. Nitrates are going up. Stop. Yeah. Just don't feed it anymore. Like tanks, like telling you I got some algae in it. Just like stop and slow down. <laughs> uh, or or up your uh, up up your export methods. Yeah. So oh, man, I'm trying to think. What uh -huh. else do we got here? We got a lot of questions that we have. You know, uh, if you we want to take well, some time yeah, to answer we, some. I mean, we might as well answer some questions. You know what? We're we're ten we, minutes we, over. Yeah, we only went ten. That's not bad. I thought we. I mean, we actually covered the coral part of this pretty fast. You know, it really isn't rocket science. You're just adding like you know natural little diets in there in Different sizes. various preserved yeah. forms, trying to get it into the tank so the corals can capture it and eat it. And some of it just broken down and uh, it'll directly absorb right through uh, yeah. the tissue. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the tissue actually has like pathways specifically designed to pump some of this stuff through and hmm. only allow those things through. So it absolutely uh, does uptake those things. Yeah. So let's see here. I can barely see these questions. There so. was one question. Do you think uh, freezing this stuff doesn't matter, does it? Okay, so this one, uh, freezing, no good. Uh, and I, and like, I haven't actually tried freezing it, okay. the, the cell co. Yeah. Uh, but like I'm told you can't. We had a question, and I, he, uh, Dave might not be able to find it. We had a question that uh, the cell con arrived frozen, and they wondered if it was still good uh, versus uh, the cell co. You know, I, I don't know the answer to that question, man. Hmm. Uh, it doesn't explicitly state don't freeze or anything like that. So it may be very different from, from that one. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know the answer. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, what else we got here? Does Cellcon have a shelf life? Yeah, so some of these things, uh, you know, the preserved, uh, I'll say, like, I've run into, like, right now, you can see that this here is, uh, you know, a liquid. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, maybe I can, it's just a liquid that you can dose. It's pretty free-flowing. I have seen it where it, like, turns into kind of stringy, gooey mess. Uh, oh, okay. And at that point, it's definitely bad. Uh, if it, like, right now, I mean, I'm going to be real brave here and smell it. Yeah, I mean, it smells like fish or whatnot, but I, you, it can smell rotten. So, like, if at some point, man, it goes rotten, and these things uh, says uh, doesn't say how long you can store it, but like, I would probably not order it for more than six months or something. I, yeah. I don't know. Huh. You know, one of the cool things is even if you're not going to do all of this, this product here is super cool because you can take those like dehydrated, you know, krill or whatnot. Right. You know, put them into a little cup and that's just the, soak them up with that's with the best new, way to use it. Yeah, and then so. dump it right into the into the tank. It actually, I think says that on here somewhere. Soak with uh, food with Selcon for three to five minutes. Frozen or fresh, freeze dried foods can be used. Freeze dried mice shrimp are extremely beneficial since they absorb six to seven times their weight in Selcon additive. That's really right. good. Yeah, so huh, yeah, cool. No, awesome. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, raw or cooked shrimp? Uh, raw? raw. Or, yeah, definitely raw. No, yeah. I wouldn't ever use a cooked food in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Totally foreign to you know, the way they would eat. Mm -hmm. Uh, does reef chili have an expiration? You know, I, I'd say that the reef chili probably should be used within like a year of you getting it. And we never have it, and we make it here in the facility, yeah. and it's never here on the shelf for more than a month or two. So from the time that you bought it, uh, you know, I probably would only use it, or only buy a size that would get you a, a year's worth. Uh, Selkan has a recipe for frozen food on their website. Pretty safe to say you can freeze it. Uh, oh, oh yeah, you know well, what? Well, I mean, you definitely freeze it like uh, after you use yeah. it. Yeah. You know? But mm. this too. So, but, you know, that's the thing is like, once this stuff is like, you know, thinned out and spread uh, throughout a, uh, you know, a whole mixed food, it right. not freezing it is a very different thing than it is freezing the actual hmm. product itself. Uh, uh, so Andy is asking you know, from Facebook, Andy, so seriously, is all this work Worth it. Uh, LRS or Larry's uh, has is a great product. Just saying. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So you look at Larry's food, man. If you can find it, you know, if you, Larry sells it in your area, uh, you know, he's chopping up scallops and stuff in the uh -huh. same kind of way here, man. Rods I don't know. There's a bunch like, of them that do that. And yeah. Uh, 
I absolutely would do that. Rod, you know, we sell Rod's food here, uh, but you know, like if you don't want to do it yourself, yeah, buy it. Yeah. There's always somebody that's willing to do it for you. Uh, <laughs> so is it worth it? Uh, I think it's fun. Yeah. You know, like it's a cool extension right. of the hobby to go and shop for the stuff. And you know, if the tank is just a tank in your house and you have somebody that like takes care of it for you, then no, absolutely not. <laughs> if you, if it's part of the hobby and you like, you know, actually feeding them is part of the whole thing. It's like, I mean, I don't know how much better like Gerber food is than, you know, like the homemade food that my wife is making for our kids. Yeah. Uh, but like, I think she honestly feels like a better mother when she's making it, right? Yeah, like she, you know, you know, blended all that food together. She found us, you know, sourced it and like put effort into it. I think you just feel better mm. about what you're doing. Like, you know, for my pets, you know, I used to go to this place called Woody's uh, that, you know, threw a chicken in a blender, you know, more or less, and you feed a blended up chicken, you know, beak and all. Yeah. And uh, I guess I feel mm. a lot better than feeding, you know, super duper, you know, meow deluxe, you know, <laughs> like uh, that's 99 cents in a bucket. Yeah. Uh, you know, but the, I guess that isn't a total fair comparison because I'd call Larry's and Rod's probably amongst the best options out there. Uh, the one thing I'd say is read it. So if you read a lot of them, man. All the ingredients know, on rods just says everything that we pretty much did yeah, here. All the stuff yeah. plus krill and all that kind of thing in yeah. it. Uh, and so read the ingredients and decide that's what you want to feed. The One of the things that it won't do is, is most of them are going to have like, you know, all of these other things for corals and stuff because if they sold that to the general public, uh, you know, you really should tune this thing to your tank, you yeah, know, okay. so if they just made a general public thing, it would be probably algae because the average person doesn't know what they're doing. You guys are watching this thing, you're learning about it and you're applying it, right? Mm -hmm. it, I mean, anybody who is a uh, hour and 15 minutes into <laughs> DIY fish food with uh, Ryan and Randy, man, you're like a different person, <laughs> the average person buying from uh, the fish store. Mm. So, uh, so what's the next one? Freeze it into blocks and then grate it into the tank. You certainly could do that. I mean, you could do that. I think that mm. I'd still cut it up into cubes or something yeah. when I was done, you know, but uh, that's just me. Hmm. Uh, any recommendations on Mandarin food? So, you know, uh, there's like Copa ova Pond, eggs yeah. or something yeah, like yeah, that that people really like. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's probably the same reef nutrition company. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you, I, I've Oyster never pearls. ever, I shouldn't say never ever, I have seen the some of the ORA ones that are like captive bred and, you mm -hmm. know, like they're you know, trained, right, trained from mm -hmm. the birth. But in general, like it's so rare to see a uh, Mandarin have an active feeding response. So I definitely seen him eat prepared foods. Like all the mandarins that have ever been in my tanks that you know, after two years, I, I've never attempted to try to feed them prepared food because yeah. that's a you know a loser thing to do because you're probably gonna end up killing it. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that I have a refugium or live rock source, a well robust uh, sand bed or whatnot to make sure there's a proper food source. But eventually, you know, they're getting healthy on that, and eventually you'll see them and they'll stumble upon a pellet food and they'll kind of suck that guy up too. But when you put the food in, unlike all the other fish, the mandarin almost never ever has like an active feeding response and goes looking Chases for it, the yeah, food yeah. that it just entered. So, Stumble upon it. Yeah, yeah. maybe the captive bred ones would, would do that. But so uh, I, I just wouldn't even buy a food that with the intent of trying to feed my mandarin like that. I would, you know, build its natural food source. And we've had this conversation before, but I think the mandarin's probably the easiest fish in the entire tank to take care of in a decent sized tank, as long as you put thought into it, because it's the only one in there that if I stop feeding today, it would be alive two years from now. Like I stopped putting food in today. It has a natural food source in there. And it's really one of the easiest fish to take care of, but I just gotta make sure that I have uh, a natural food source for it that will populate and you know is sustainable. If I don't have that, I just roll the dice and uh, in most cases it will die. Huh. Uh, so there you go. Uh, As astaxanthin. We're being corrected all over, all over three. Oh man! All right, there you go. <laughs> Astaxanthin. What do we call it? Oh, I don't even want to go Axin back. Astaxanthin or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I know. I knew I was going to get that wrong. Oh, uh, how long? Or is it, there's a couple questions about freezing. So one is, uh, how do you keep it from freezing solid? And one is, is after it's freezer burnt, 
uh, is it still good to use? Yeah, freezer burnt, like anything, if you wouldn't eat it, then don't yeah, feed it to your pets, man. Throw it away. So like if you're making it that much, uh, that's why another good idea probably is to use like if you have one, like a, a deep um, freeze type. A deep freezer, so like using a chest freezer that when you open up your fridge or whatnot, you know, all the air, cold, cold air rushes out. Mm. That stuff isn't really designed to be in there for a year. So if you have a, a chest freezer, you know, in your garage or something, use that one for your fish food. Mm. Uh, like, like to store the 12, you know, pull the one out uh, for the month or whatnot. Uh, but uh, also, I was gonna say the vacuum sealer. Oh yeah. So true. the vacuum sealer will prevent uh, a the lot of the burn freezer stuff. burn. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, yeah, uh, there was a question like, how do you keep it from freezing? I think the ultimate goal is here. You make so much of it, you do want to freeze it. Oh, you like, definitely want to freeze it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna make this and then try to keep it, you know, you know, semi fresh. No, I, I want this to freeze into a, a sheet when I'm done and then cut it up. I like you wouldn't do this and. Well, most people wouldn't do this and try to like feed this daily because I don't have the kind of time. Nah. So, uh, and if I if I left this in the fridge, I would probably feel okay with feeding it for a few days. But what I wouldn't feel okay with is you know having it in my fridge next to where I'm feeding food to my kids and myself because you know it's raw shrimp and it's got mm. raw shrimp hands and juice on it yeah. and stuff. And so, like, I really just don't want to leave this in my fridge every day. Uh, like, that's just a recipe for a disaster on a long enough timeline. Mm. Uh, Josh asks, what about garlic? How much would you add if you were adding some? So, this is like the, you know, hot button item. And would uh, you add garlic? Uh, no. Yeah, me I, either. I've, I mean, I've seen the garlic supplements, the little dripper bottles of garlic, or food infused with garlic, and... Maybe it has, uh, you know, some kind of uh, res uh, increased re feeding response from fish because it works. I use it for bass fishing. I mean, I use every once in a while. I'll dip, uh, you know, dip something in in a garlic blend, which is supposed to induce feeding. But uh, it works on me, man. I I like well, <laughs> go after like, garlic bread, man. In the moment you put it on, oh uh, yeah. Know. Uh, but I, I don't think I, I wouldn't use it myself. No, not for me. So this is a hotly debated item. What I'm about to say is not true or not true. Uh, but uh, I think a lot, a lot of people think that garlic is maybe a feeding response thing. Mm -hmm. uh, very few people think that it actually is helping the fish with the immune response or a health or. I, th I think that kind of ventures from like a belief that a garlic's gonna cure all in humans and right. must cure your fish too. Yeah. In fact, I actually saw a study where it actually hurts the fish's heart or liver, you mm -hmm. know, so it's actually a, a negative. So uh, I wouldn't put garlic in there. You know, yeah. I, I would definitely consider like vitamins. I'd definitely consider uh, amino acids and other actual nutrients and mm -hmm. all of those things are you know flavor and appetite enhancers as well mm -hmm. I just wouldn't do that one and I got news for you if you're going through this effort and you're putting all this stuff in there and this coral food and stuff in there and your fish ain't gonna eat the garlic ain't gonna help man. Like, <laughs> that wasn't gonna be the thing that pushed it over yeah all right uh, what else? We got a couple other ones in here there's algae pellets as oh a yeah man that's a really good good yeah, one right man here. Uh, you know what? Thank you very much for that. So, uh, seaweed extreme here, you know, so don't want to crush up all that nori and whatnot in there. I don't blame you because uh, I don't really like using nori either. I want to get the, you know, algae into the fish's diet because it's normal uh, or, you know, required for their, you know, ne, you know biology mm. uh, or metabolic health rather. But, uh, like, I don't want to go through all that, you know, process. Uh, so it's not that big of a deal to crush it up and put it in a food like this. No. I just don't, like, put my hands in the tank every day and trying to clip it to that ugly clip. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you go ahead and, you know, mix, you know, a little bit of these little algae pellets. In this case, this is, you know, 67% seaweed in this pellet here. You know, like, I, I would absolutely, you know, consider these as a really solid option of putting it, you know, into the tank or into your overall seafood mix. And uh, I, there's absolutely good reason, man, 67%. Yeah. Hmm. So, all right, we've got just a couple of more questions in here, man. Uh, is it okay to feed a bubble tip anemone, just a small piece of raw fish? I've been uh, doing that 
and he, she it takes, takes it from my, my fingers. fingers. Yeah, why not, man? Absolutely. So I would do a very small thing. We talked about this, I think, like a week ago or yeah, so. Yeah, we were talking coral nutrition. Yeah, and don't, that. like, a lot of people feed silver sides and stuff, and it's super cool to watch him, like, grab that giant fish and right. swallow it. Uh, and you may or may not know this, or you may not even believe it when I say it, but somewhere about 2 a.m. it's going to throw it back up because it's most of them aren't going to be able to digest that thing. They have really, right. really rudimentary uh, digestive tracts that are more or less just rotting this thing inside of it to break it down. And something as big as a silver side is going to become toxic uh, rather fast. So small pieces of fish uh, feeding it that way is probably super beneficial. Big ones, even though it looks cool, probably less so. Uh, all right, what else we got here? Uh, uh. How much dry pellets is equivalent to one cube of frozen food? Oh, oh you know, you know what, that's... man? Like, uh, probably five. Uh, you know, like, uh, I mean, <laughs> protein content. Uh, yeah, uh, like way, way higher, man. Because a uh, cube of food, you can go look at it. Uh, look at the water content of it, and it'll tell you it's 80% water. Mostly water, yeah. Right? This is not 80% water, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, by weight and probably by size, the, uh, you know, dried foods are way, 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 way more nutrient dense. Mm -hmm. Cool thing about that, though, or two of them, I guess, is, uh, you know, what they do eat. You know, they're getting tons and tons and tons of nutrition from it. Instead of, like, they eat one mice shrimp, you know, they probably got to eat, you know, a whole, or uh, for one pellet, they probably got to eat a whole bunch of my mice shrimp to get a similar amount of, right. of nutrition out of it. The downside to it, though, I guess, is that you're so easy to overfeed this. So, like, overfeeding these pellets uh, is hard, or like, it's really easy, rather. I, and like I can, you know, double down on it with a tiny little extra shake. Yeah. Overfeeding the uh, frozen foods real it's difficult. Take a lot. I gotta yeah. have to like put two or three more cubes in, you know, and that would I had to be very intentional about that. So mm. I'd say the pellets are way, way, way more likely to result in like a nutrient problem in your tank mm. than it is uh, a cube of frozen food. Yeah. Uh, do you feed bloodworms? I, I have not. Mm. Uh, the the uh, copper band butterflies. I think um, I get trained on things like blood worms and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So uh, people train them. Live on ones, that. usually. Uh, live ones, yeah. Yeah. So the uh, marginalis uh, butterfly, which is real similar to right. a copper band that's in the XXL 750. I can't remember how many months, but it was a really, really long time that Chad had to feed him live blood worms to train him to mm -hmm. start eating. You yeah. Know? Uh, what was that tile fish that he had up front? Oh, the orange orange spotted filefish. Okay, yeah, yeah. the uh, orange spotted filefish. People ask a lot about that one because they're not easy to get to eat. You're right. And what he actually did was take like a frozen paste like uh, this and then paste it all over the outside of acroskeleton and then freeze it in the <laughs> uh, freezer and then come and put it in the tank. Wow. And then he would eat it like it was tissue off of an acro wow. uh, right off of there. And eventually just like, you know what? I don't like acro anymore. Yeah. I like this fish paste stuff. Yeah. And so you could just start feeding the tank normally. That's so cool. that was a transition. All right. Mm. Given the cost of the commercial foods versus DIY using fresh ingredients, do you, do you think that uh, commercial fish foods have fillers that uh, aren't good for the fish? Most ornamental fish food have fillers versus food grade. Given the cost of commercial food versus DIY using fresh ingredients. So, uh, you know what? Uh, I don't know. You know, I mean, so here's the thing is like you think that you got uh, a, you know, a really expensive reef tank and so the fish stuff that you're getting for it must be super, super high grade or hmm. analytic, whatever, but like, Pet grade is pretty far down the list, man, <laughs> uh, actually. And so, like, when, you know, we were doing all that pharmaceutical grade testing on the chemicals and whatnot, yeah. I mean, you're assuming that the chemicals that you're getting from, you know, Reef, a, you know, Deluxe or whatever is going to be the purest thing in the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, but pet grade, man, like, actually doesn't have a grade. You know, there, there's no pet grade. You know, it's just industrial grade, and then we 
you know, sourced it to the best of their ability to, you know, get hmm. it to. So when we're using like USB grade, uh, it's actually a standard for pharmaceuticals and has a way bigger standard. So same thing with food, you know, the food that you're feeding, you know, you're allowed to feed your kids and they're allowed to serve at restaurants and sell at the grocery store has a way, way, way higher standard mm. than, uh, you know, Meow Cat Deluxe, you know, <laughs> uh, or whatever, like, you know, $1.99 a box, yeah. you know. So, uh, you know, it's probably part of the difference there. All right, anything else? Uh, uh, one no. last one up there? I was just asking if we could put the ingredient list that we had here oh. into the comments, but. Uh, we probably won't do that. No, because I think we're gonna teach you what, you know, how much of each portion to do in the next one of these? Hey, you know what? This one thawed, so you can see now it's just a sheet. Uh, yeah, you can freeze uh, that. Uh, freeze it now, and it's chunk like it you know one cohesive thing. So yeah, and chunk it up, chop it up after it's done, after it's done freezing. Cool. So yeah, uh, step two, V two of frozen food. I think we're gonna play around with this a little bit, yeah. and. Uh, you know, we're gonna probably make some choices and try them. And like, I don't wanna give you guys a recipe that like- uh, uh, That we wouldn't when, use. Yeah, the, I wanna say like, I really love this one. Yeah. This is the one. For sure. You know, so, uh, and uh, so, I don't know, maybe a month or so, we'll probably come back here and show an actual recipe. If you're in a hurry be, before that, and you're just super excited about this, feel free, man. You can't screw this up. It's really hard, <laughs> it'd be really hard to screw it it's up. It's fun to play with. Yeah, so, awesome. Uh, uh, next week, uh, water changes, man. And I'm just gonna go hit on this one a little bit, man, yeah. because people have been calling me out. Uh, and uh, uh, on this tank, man, we did Triton, and we talked about no water changes and all kinds of stuff. We talked about it in the ULMs. Yeah. And, you know, we part did. of the ULMs is just a, uh, it was a tank trial, man. And it, it definitely did not work on new tanks. Uh, it <laughs> no. was a terrible idea to not do water changes on brand new tanks. Uh, and uh, on this tank here, uh, I mean, it was robust and it was just fine. Uh, except for when the test said do the water change. You gotta you do had it. To. Yeah. And in our environment, I'd just rather set up the auto water change and not do any tests. There you uh, go. Like, or not do the ICP test, personally. And in your home environment, maybe you want to do it different, uh, but uh, that's just the way it worked for us. So what you're going to learn, though, I think, as we're talking about it is, I really think for most people that doing the water changes is probably the more surefire path to uh, success than the not. And I know people like kind of wear, I don't do many water changes, like a bad or badge of pride almost. Right, you know? right, right, right. Like I can get away with it and uh, I learned something that nobody else knows. And that's probably true for you. It definitely worked. But uh, I would say for every one of you, there is 10 people where they failed. So when we're sharing that information with people, we're trying to help people be successful, not, you know, you know, tolerate our own pride, man, because, you know, a lot of people listen to, you know, the people out there who produce results and they want to do the same thing. So we just got to make sure that we share the whole picture to people as much yeah. as we can. So we're going to talk about that next week. Uh, I just wanted to mention uh, for those of you who are wondering, uh, who can't really smell what it's like in here, it's fishy. Oh yeah, so. dude, it stinks. And, uh, <laughs> there's no question. Uh, this this whole process definitely, definitely stinks. Yeah. And uh, right on a day you can open the windows. Yeah. All right, man. All uh, right. Have a super awesome weekend. And uh, this was super fun. All right. See you guys.